Hey y'all, it's Will, and today we're going to be flying over Kentucky, state number 17 on our tour of all 50 U.S. states in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, we are flying into Louisville, or as the locals would call it, Louisville. Uh, Kentucky is home to 4.468 million people, making it state number 26 in terms of most populated states. It is... 40,408 square miles, making it the 37th largest state by area, and it was admitted to the Union in 1792, making it state number 15 uh, to gain statehood. Natives were likely living in Kentucky as early as 10,000 years ago, although we don't have evidence to support that quite yet. Uh, Mississippian cultures became dominant in the region around 900 BC. French explorers were first Europeans to claim the land uh, around 1679. I believe that's Churchill Downs we're flying over right now, uh, the site of the Kentucky Derby. Although I'm not sure. I know Kentucky Down or the Churchill Downs is somewhere in and around this area. Of course, there could be more than one horse track in the area. It is Kentucky after all. In 1774, the first European settlement was founded. Uh, reportedly, over 1,500 American se settlers were killed between the year 1783 and 1790, uh, which prompted U.S. military action to remove Native Americans in the area. Kentucky amicably separated from Virginia in the se late 1780s um, and would have gained statehood a little bit earlier. Um, they actually had a bill submitted to Congress uh, underneath the Articles of Confederation to gain statehood. Uh, however, the day before Congress uh, voted on the bill to grant Kentucky statehood, uh, they happened to ratify the, the new U.S. Constitution. Uh, and they felt that since they just switched constitutions, uh, they felt that Kentucky should have to resubmit their paperwork and everything. Uh, so uh, that ended up delaying the process by a few years. But they did eventually get statehood in 1792. As we fly over downtown Louisville, the tallest building is the National City Tower, which stands at 512 feet. We are right across the river from southern Ohio. Down there is a minor league baseball stadium, uh, where the Louisville Sluggers play their home games. The state never officially seceded uh, from the Union during the Civil War, uh, and in fact, uh, they maintained neutrality um, officially, uh, but are, consi were, are considered to be a Union state. Alright, so I guess officially they were a Union state, but um, the state government declared neutrality. Uh, but 68 out of the 110 counties uh, passed uh, secession, or acts of secession amongst themselves. So on a state level, uh, the state remained in the Union, but many of the counties wanted to join the Confederacy. So it was... Kentucky is kind of a weird middle ground of Union and Confederate forces. Uh, and in fact, uh, a Confederate government, state government of Kentucky was uh, set up in Bowling Green uh, during the Civil War. In 1900, Governor William Goebel was assassinated. Um, this was right after an election. Uh, as we fly over University of Louisville football stadium, where Lamar Jackson played his college football games. Uh, Governor Goebel uh, had just uh, had a, a re-election, and it was too close to call, um, and the results weren't really certain. Uh, and his political rival, the the man he was running against, uh, William T William S. Taylor, uh, was frustrated that Goebel wasn't leaving office. Um, and then, coincidentally, Goebel was shot and killed. Uh, and uh, William L William S. Taylor, the political opponent, was eventually convicted as a co-conspirator. Co -conspirator. But he fled to Indiana and was not extradited, uh, so he ended up not serving any jail time for it. Uh, and then, uh, about ten years later, um, William S. Taylor was a Republican, and then ten years later, Kentucky finally got a, another Republican governor, and that governor pardoned uh, Taylor. So, 
as a co-conspirator in killing the governor of Kentucky, uh, he served zero years in prison, which is interesting. Uh, and to this day, that's the only time a sitting governor of a U.S. state has ever been assassinated while in office. City of Louisville has a population of 767,000 people. Uh, 1.265 million people live in the metropolitan area, which makes it the 46th largest metro area in the United States. I apologize. I let, let me first say that I kind of apologize if I'm pronouncing it wrong, uh, but also the locals are the ones that are wrong, uh, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, Louisville was first settled in 1778. Rapids uh, in the Ohio River prevented settlement further downstream, uh, so settlement kind of congregated around Louisville instead. Uh, the town was named for King Louis the Sixteenth of France. King Louis, not King Louis, you know. So it should be Louisville, you know. I've been told you have to hiccup on the U and say Louisville, but it's it's Louisville, you know. And this is a hill I'm willing to die on. Okay, so come at me, all you natives of Kentucky. Uh, you're all wrong, I think. <laughs> um, anyway, um, early on, uh, Louisville was a major shipping port. Um, ethnic tensions. Oh, that's a, is that a water park down there? That's cool. I don't think I've seen a water park from the air yet. I guess we did fly over Disney World in Orlando. And we have a... Oh, this is cool, actually. Um, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at a kid being distracted by shiny objects. I like this little area here. Let's see if we can find the uh, University of Louisville campus, too, while we're at it. Um, I know the stadium's right here. I don't know uh, where the campus is in relation to a stadium. Typically, they're kind of close to each other, um, but you never really know. With big college football programs, sometimes they smartly build the stadium somewhere more accessible by traffic. But this, uh, this is actually campus right here. Never mind. Nice looking campus from above. I'm sure it's a cool campus to go to, being in a big city, kind of, but also getting that actual college campus architecture and feel. You know, it's not like a, it's not like NYU or something where you don't, it doesn't, it's indistinguishable from the buildings around it. You know, like you have your own little part of town that's just for the college, uh, which I always enjoy that in college campuses. Anyway, as I, was, as I was saying, there were ethnic tensions in the 1850s between Germans, Irish, and Protestants, uh, and uh, the tensions actually culminated in violence, and uh, people would get killed uh, in conflicts between the groups. Um, but the Civil War kind of distracted those groups from fighting each other. Um, in the Civil War, Louisville was a firm Union stronghold, um, and that kept Kentucky from joining the Confederacy, for the most part. The first Kentucky Derby was held in 1875. In 1890, a F-4 tornado struck the town, killing somewhere between 74 and 120 people. What's interesting to me is that uh, they can tell that it was an F-4 tornado back in 1890. Uh, I don't... That may have been right at the dawn of uh, people keeping meteorological data like that. Um, but, you know, it's... Otherwise, if... Uh, I can't imagine the data is too great, um, so I wonder if that is recorded, like wind speed data and whatnot, or if that's just uh, an inference based off of the damage uh, in historical reports from the time. Um, if anyone happens to know, uh, let me know, but, you know, that'd be interesting to figure out. Fort Tornado also caused $69 million in damage, adjusted for inflation. Uh, the Great Flood of 1937 submerged 70% of the city and forced over 200,000 people to evacuate, uh, which prompted the construction of flood walls along the Ohio River. In the 1970s, the city experienced suburbanization and a loss of local manufacturing. Um, but, starting in the 1980s, a lot of the city has been revitalized uh, and it's become a popular area for young professionals and college students. Um, today, the economy is based off of shipping. It's the seventh largest inland port in the United States, manufacturing, and small business. 
The record high in Louisville was 107 degrees, average high 67.8, average low is 22, and, or, sorry, I lost my place. Record high is 107, average high 67.8, record low is tw negative 22, and average low is 48.6. Notable people uh, from Louisville include Muhammad Ali, Tom Cruise, Edwin Hubble, namesake of the Hubble Telescope, Jennifer Lawrence, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, basketball coach Rick Pitino, NBA player Rajan Rondo, uh, news commentator D Diane Sawyer, uh, pizza icon Papa John, writer Hunter S. Thompson, and NFL Hall of Famer Johnny Unitas. Without further ado, uh, without further ado, to say in the Louisville accent, um, let's move on to our next uh, location. Um, before we uh, start talking about Frankfurt, I just want to say that in the song Before He Cheats by the legend Carrie Underwood, she says Louisville slugger, not Louisville slugger, and... Frankly, Carrie Underwood is right. Whatever she says goes. So, therefore, it's Louisville. And for the remainder of this video, we will say Louisville instead of Louisville. Uh, but anyway, we are flying over Frankfurt now. Or Frankfurt. <laughs> I immediately mispronounced the next city. Uh, Frankfurt's home to 26,000 people. Uh, actually, now that I mention it, um, I guess I'm not sure if it's Frankfurt or Frankfurt. I'm going to call it Frankfurt. That's how I've always heard it pronounced. Uh, but, you know, uh, maybe people pronounce things weird across all of Kentucky. And it's not limited to just Louisville. Um, Frankfurt's, uh, Frankfurt was established in 1786. Um, but it's named Frankfurt because in 1780, a pioneer named Stephen Frank was killed by Native Americans at a ford in the Kentucky River. Um, so after that, the area was known as Frank's Ford. And which eventually just became Frankfurt, Frankfurt, and then Frankfurt, or Frankfurt. See, now I'm all in my head about how to pronounce basic words, you know? Um, I, I'm not a fan of it. The first structures in the town were built in 1786. In 1792, Frankfurt was chosen as the state's capital after a bribe of 10 boxes of glass, 1,500 pounds of nails, $50 worth of locks and hinges, and $3,000 worth of gold uh, were made to the committee in charge of finding a capital. In 1798, the governor's mansion was constructed, uh, and it is now the oldest... Uh, executive uh, mansion in the country. So, in other words, it's the oldest governor's mansion, or president's White House, uh, whatever, <laughs> um, in the country. Uh, the Confederate Army can briefly captured Frankfurt in 1862, making it the only time the Confederates ever controlled a Union capital. Frankfurt grew substantially in the 1960s, uh, but growth kind of tapered off in the 1980s and has remained stable ever since. Um, tiny little town uh, for a state capital, especially. You know, um, I'm not sure where it ranks among state capitals, but it's it surely isn't too high. Um, I know it's larger than Montpelier of Vermont. Um, that one only has uh, around 8,000, I think. Uh, but, you know, uh, actually, you know what? While we're flying around, I'll look up state capitals by population. I do like how it's kind of nestled in the hills, though. Like, it's definitely a unique layout for a or it definitely forces the city layout to be unique. And I think what's uh what's especially jarring is that there's like not even much of a metropolitan area around the city either. 
Um, you know, like some ci some cities are tiny just because they're a tiny little like tiny little land area, but they uh. Um, they have a lot of suburbs around it, so it's, like, balanced a little bit. Uh, it looks like Augusta, Maine only has 18,000. And Pierre, South Dakota has 13,000. Montpelier has 7,800. So, yeah, um bottom five capital city in terms of uh, population, uh, which is a unique thing, you know? Um, it's kind of interesting to get that small town feel while also being uh, a state capital. Uh, but we can go ahead and uh, keep moving. Still mad about uh, how people pronounce Louisville. Sorry, Louisville. Uh, but anyway, we're flying into Bowling Green now. Home to 71,000 people. 179,000 people live in a metropolitan area. Flying into, I believe this is Western Kentucky University. We're flying over right now. Bowling Green was founded in 1778, but nobody's really too sure about why it's called Bowling Green. Uh, it's either named after a green space in New York City, uh, where colonists toppled a statue of King George, uh, or it's named after the town of Bowling Green, Virginia, or it's named after a lawn game that the founders of the town used to play. Uh, they're all competing theories, and nobody really quite knows uh, which one is right. Uh, early on, steamboat comrades helped the city to grow into what it is uh, today. In 1859, the town got its first railroad connection, which, if you've been watching the rest of the series, you know that... Uh, that's usually integral in the growth of the city. Um, and along those lines, uh, um, in the 1960s, uh, ra roadway expansions uh, in the form of new highways and new bypasses uh, helped the city to expand outward instead of building up, um, for better or for worse. Kind of talked about suburbanization a little bit in the Kansas City segment. Uh, this, uh, in the 1800s, the area was notable for its fertile soil. Uh, it was extra good for agriculture. Uh, the city officially declared neutrality during the Civil War, um, but that didn't stop it from being raided by both the Union and Confederate armies. Um, Confederate first, and the Union had to take it back. After the Civil War, the town economy diversified, uh, and it started, uh, having some small business action going on uh, to supplement the uh, agriculture in the area. And then Western Kentucky University was founded in 1906. Uh, today, the largest uh, sectors of the economy... Whoops, uh, ignore that. The largest sectors of the economy include education, healthcare, and business. Notable people uh, from Bowling Green include the band Cage the Elephant, and Senator Rand Paul, um, perennial uh, Republican candidate for president as long as it's uh, early on in the primaries uh, because he never gets too far, Rand Paul. Fly over downtown one more time, maybe fly a little bit lower and a little bit closer to campus if we can spot it again. Here we are. Very nice, very nice. All right, it's been a long time, a hot minute since we've checked out an actual natural wonder of a state. You know, we've been uh, flying over Indiana, then Illinois, then uh, Iowa, then Kansas, last few videos. Not a whole lot to see, but Kentucky actually does have some natural beauty. Uh, no offense to those aforementioned states I just mentioned. 
Uh, this is the Daniel Boone Na um, Forest. Uh, more specifically, we're flying over the Red River Gorge region. Uh, and I just, I don't have any facts, really. I just figured it'd be nice to fly around, check out the, uh, the mountains. Personally, uh, I've always preferred the Rocky Mountains, or, and just the mountains out west over the Appalachian Mountains. But, uh, this section here is, uh, particularly beautiful. This is some of what the best of what the Appalachians have to offer. I think. Uh, if you don't know, this is in eastern Kentucky. Um, not not terribly close to the Virginia border, but not too far away either. And if you look at a, a population map of Kentucky, um, like a population density map, I think you'll suspect that most of the population um, is in central Kentucky and towards the west. Uh, because most of the east is actually mountainous, um, and it doesn't really get flat until you get out towards the central and western part of the territory. But this is a uh, absolutely beautiful section of a river here, um, for Red River, I'm assuming, if it's called the Red River Gorge. I, uh... Bet you there's a lot of good hiking and uh, rock climbing around around these parts. Uh, and with that, let's move on to our final destination, Lexington. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before we uh, jump to Lexington, uh, we're actually going to go fly around northern Kentucky. Um, this is a last-minute audible that I'm calling. Uh, originally, I was going to include northern Kentucky uh, in Cincinnati section of Ohio. Um, but I figured uh, we'll go fly around it right now. Uh, I don't have any facts to share about northern Kentucky because I didn't do any research on it prior to uh, this video, but uh, we'll certainly discuss the founding and development of the area when we talk about Cincinnati during the Ohio video. Uh, so instead of me reading you uh, a bunch of facts uh, like a some sort of computer, why don't you and I just both enjoy the scenery together um, as we both see it, or as I see it for the first time, and if you're a non-Northern Kentucky native, maybe this is the first time you're seeing it too. Don't look too closely at Cincinnati. That's for you'll get spoiled for a future video. Well, we'll look at it anyway, just in case. There it is. All right, but we'll focus on Kentucky. Northern Kentucky is the second largest metropolitan area in the state, which it beats out uh, Lexington. Um, it's only behind Louisville. And although it's the second largest metropolitan area, it doesn't really have one big keystone city. I mean, it does. That city is uh, Cincinnati. Um, but like on the Kentucky side, um, I wouldn't say there's a, a big well-known city. Covington is a city right across the river, and it's probably the largest settlement. Um, but the metropolitan area really kind of sprawls out along the highways here, as you can kind of tell. This is, of course, the Ohio River. Um, we're pretty close. Uh, we're in Kentucky right now. Right across the river is Ohio, but we're pretty close to Indiana if we go downstream just a little bit more. Looks like we have another horse track down over there. Surprise, surprise. I don't think I'll ever get tired of just flying around new places. Um, I, I, 
most of the time, uh, this state included, um, when I do these videos, I'm seeing the, the location for the first time along with you guys. Um, so it's always super cool to research a place. And we didn't do any research in Northern Kentucky this time. Uh, but it's always super cool to research a place and then uh, learn a bunch about it and then see it for the first time. I, like, I, I really enjoy the process. I'll have my standard video outro coming up, uh, urging you all to comment for a few reasons, but I'll go ahead and tack on one more here. Um, if you have any questions about the process behind how the videos are made, um, go ahead and ask away. Uh, I think I've uh, covered the basics already, you know, um, at least my research process. I, uh, uh, basically just uh, skim Wikipedia and give you guys the condensed version of Wikipedia articles, um, and then do a little bit of side research if necessary, um, but it's not always necessary to do research beyond Wikipedia. Uh, and as far as selection of locations goes, I talk, I talk about that a little bit in the Lexington, Lexington part of the video. Um, I actually recorded that before I recorded this, so we went out of order. But, uh, I try to hit every city of over 100,000 people, um, and that's usually a good benchmark unless you live in California, Texas, or New York, where there's just a ton of, uh, places to see. Um, and then I also, uh, for, as far as natural, like, beauty, natural wonders go, uh, let's call them. Uh, if I know about it, then I'll include it. And if not, I'll sometimes, uh, I usually try to do a Google search. But it's kind of tough to tell sometimes if it's, if it's going to look good from the air. So I definitely appreciate comments asking me to go look at, like, more natural wondery stuff. Um, those suggestions are super helpful. Um, but with that, we can finally move on to Lexington, without further ado. Lexington is home to 322,000 people, making it the second largest city in Kentucky. The metropolitan area is home to 517,000 people, making it the 109th largest metro area in the United States. Settlers founded the city of Lexington in 1775, and it was named to honor the Revolutionary War victories at the Battles of Lexington and Concord. By 1806, Lexington, Lexington was the largest and wealthiest town in Kentucky, and for that matter, the largest and wealthiest city west of the, um, the Appalachian Mountains at the time. The town was struck by an epidemic of cholera in 1843, uh, which killed 7% of the entire population in just two months. We're flying over the University of Kentucky campus right now, home of the Kentucky Wildcats, uh, who play football. Uh, but more notably, I think, play basketball. Uh, there were additional outbreaks of cholera in 1849, 1850, 1851, and much of the early 1850s at that. Um, at the time, uh, people didn't really know that cholera was uh, caused by contaminated water sources, uh, which is why it was such a recurring problem. The economy at the time was primarily based on growing tobacco and hemp, uh, which, of course, are two very slave-intensive crops. Nowadays, the economy relies on manufacturing, technology, and entrepreneurship. Notable people from Lexington include longtime NFL kicker David Akers, former Secretary of State uh, John C. Beckenridge. Actually, he's Vice President, not Second Secretary of State. But, former Secretary of State John Brecken Breckenridge, not John C., just normal John, uh, was also from here. Uh, Pre-Civil War, a uh, notable politician and four-time presidential loser Henry Clay. Um, Jefferson Davis, uh, President of the Confederacy. George Clooney, Ashley Judd, and Mary Todd Lincoln. All have resided in Lexington at some point in their lives. Lexington seems like a nice area. I've never been to Kentucky. Um, Kentucky is a... Uh, I guess, uh, besides, I was going to say, Kentucky is the easternmost state that I've never been to, um, but I don't think I've ever been to Rhode Island. 
Um, but Rhode Island, ignoring Rhode Island, uh, Kentucky is the furthest east of any state that I have not been to yet. Um, maybe I'll go to Louisville someday and check out Lexington. fly over downtown. Got another big horse racetrack here. Lexington um, is has historically been big on the thoroughbred breeding scene. I feel like I'm pretty good with my state capitals, um, but uh, for some reason in my head I have it I have it just stuck in my head that Lexington's the capital of Kentucky, when in fact it's Frankfurt. Frankfurt. Uh, and I actually, uh, let me pull up the comment because uh, I I was, uh, I had that in my head when I was planning out this video, and I com uh, completely forgot to include Frankfurt into, until a comment on my Kansas video, so thanks to uh, TZ uh, Hamblin uh, for commenting on the Kansas video. Literally, I was about an hour away from recording this, and you said, hey, don't forget Lexington and Frankfurt. And I was like, oh yeah, Frankfurt exists. Um, and then I realized it was the state capital. Um, so, of course, that, it got included in the video. Um, but, you know. Uh, on that note, uh, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you liked this video, uh, I'm glad that you enjoyed it. I'm not too interested in... Or I'm not, I don't want to say I'm not interested, but, you know. Uh, I'm not motivated necessarily by likes or subscriptions on YouTube, uh, I, though I will say that if you do subscribe, you can expect similar content in the future um, for other locations. But uh, I am motivated by comments, uh, comments like comments like the one that was left on Kansas, that allowed me to check out Frankfurt without missing it. Um, those are important because I don't miss important locations in your state. So comment for one of three reasons. One. Uh, if there is a location in a future state that I should check out. Um, if it's something like, uh, next video is, is uh, Louisiana. Obviously, I want to check out New Orleans. Uh, but, you know, uh, if you live in a, a smaller town in Louisiana, that would still be interesting to look at from above. Definitely let me know. Usually, my criteria for picking towns is, uh, I look at the top five largest uh, metro areas. Um... And include everything. I, I try to hit every metro area that's over 100,000 people. Or not every metro area, every city. I try to hit every city that's over 100,000 people. Um, and if uh, if there's not enough cities of over 100,000 people in the state, then I uh, loosen up the guidelines a little bit. Um, but if your city has more than 100,000 people and it's not in Texas or New York, um, there's a really good chance that I'll hit, I'll find it already. Uh, but you know, uh, if there's, still feel free to comment if there's a location that I should check out in your upcoming state. Two, if I made any factual inaccuracies during this video, um, besides pronunciation, I'm not, I'm not interested in you explaining why it's actually Louisville, uh, because we all know it's Louisville. Um, but you know, if I made any, uh, it, it getting serious. If I made any factual inaccuracies, please let me know. Um, I do this partially because I enjoy learning about these places. And I wouldn't want to mislead myself. And I certainly wouldn't want to mislead anybody else that watched this video. So definitely go ahead and point out any mistakes. Uh, and last, uh, if you... Or if there's any places in Kentucky that I missed, uh, definitely let me know. Uh, and at the end of the series, I'll probably come back around and do a Places I Missed style video. Um, just to tie up loose ends and make sure that we really do hit every interesting point to see in the United States. Uh, so with all that said, uh, thank you all so much for watching, and take care now, y'all.